This week's scenario is close quarters. It consists of two flags. The friendly flag can be dominated for one CP. The enemy flag can be controlled for one CP or dominated for two CPs. Victory conditions consists of five control points or caster assassination. Today's matchup is a challenge list. My buddy uh, War Machinist uh, just got Brenos and the Riphorn painted up and he challenged me to make a list playing with them. Uh, so I'm going to try to kill three birds with one stone. Advanced Maneuvers doesn't have a video with Morvana 1 in it, so I'm going to try to knock that out. And as you can see, I'm playing with Brenos and the Riphorn. Uh, I've got a unit of uh, Blood Trackers with Nuala, a unit of Blood Weavers for those nasty upkeep removals, one set of Shifting Stones with the UA, uh, some Swamp Gobbers, and the ever-present Gator Man Bokor with the Shamblers. Alright gang, War Machine is here and today I'm going to be playing uh, Menoth List Tier 4 Black Widows for Thyra. Um, the first thing you're going to see is that PP's version of Thyra and then a Reaper version of Thyra that I just think looks twice as good. Um, so this is Tier 4, so my Daughters of the Flame or FAU, I only have two units of them. If I redid this list I'd lose the uh, Devout and probably add another list, add another unit of Daughters, but I've got the Flame Ringers, two units of Daughters, a full Choir, a Sanctifier, a Revenger, Blood of Martyrs and a Devout. Probably too many jacks for Thyra, but uh, this li list is wicked fast, so let's have some fun. Alright, so I want the roll to go first, and that's pretty important when you're playing this tier. Um, it lets me uh, really get far up the table. Um, the entire army gets stealth on the first turn uh, with a tier 4 benefit. Um, so that's, that's something else that I'm looking forward to with the list. Um, I've only played this list before at 35 points. So this is the first time trying to move it to 50. And as I said, kind of in the list setup, I, I would like to have another unit of daughters. I would lose the devout. I would keep the sanctifier, keep the blood of martyrs, obviously, and, and uh, I'd keep the revenger because I like the idea of being able to get pursuit out with the revenger. Um, so I've got a max choir, which is actually kind of unusual um, in the fact that uh, I don't usually take a max choir in Menoth, but it just works out with this tier, and there's not a whole lot of choices for you to take. Um, but the benefit's going to be my advanced deploy and my advanced moves. My opponent has a couple of units of infantry and a caster that can get just about anywhere it needs to on this board with acrobatics. Uh, you really can't screen them out uh, from getting to your caster very effectively. Uh, I'm going to try, but it's not a sure thing. I don't want my blood trackers to uh, have to deal with his cavalry because they hit blood trackers trivially on the charge. So uh, I'm gonna his cavalry's up top. So I'm gonna kind of keep my blood trackers toward the center and bottom of this uh, Minoth temple complex. Uh, my swamp shamblers are gonna go to the very bottom, and they're gonna try to kind of squeeze in and uh, position the Bokor in a good place to pick up as many souls as he can. I'm gonna use the Gatorman Witch Doctor to give t tough and undead to my trackers, so it's not gonna be quite as many souls as I could possibly pick up, I guess. All right, so my advanced deploy is the uh, two units of Daughters of Nicaea. Um, my strategy going into this is going to be the Flamebringers that are kind of the top of the map are going to that black and white checker thing in the middle of the board that you see is a wall. So they're going to run to that wall on the first turn and flank him since they have the only natural pathfinder that I have in the list. Um, the Daughters are going to uh, um, attempt to take out entire units of his uh, team. That's the plan going in. My AD is fairly straightforward. As I said, I'm going to try to stay away from his murder ponies, the, the Minoth version of murder ponies. And I'm going to pray the bottom unit of uh, daughters, as, I, as that's the way I'm going to swing. Uh, I'm just going to try to keep him off of my flag as best I can. I don't particularly care for this matchup unless he gets hyper aggressive and lets me get away with some craziness. Uh, it's going to be bad for me. We'll see. Alright, so turn one, the, uh, he's prayed my uh, blue daughters, I guess the ones towards the bottom of the map, uh, with his blood trackers. 
Um, so my goal here is to go into bait him to get him to come after those those models. Um, I'm going to try to run them out to a point where with vengeance moves and everything, uh, he's had to commit enough of them that uh, I'll be able to take them off the table. Um, these daughters are the ones that are not preyed are just going to run up and show them the speed of the list. Uh, staggered a bit so in case he kills the front ones, the back ones can vengeance forward. So one of the nice things about this tier is that all your warjacks start with a free focus on turn one. Um, and again, two of them had advanced move, so that's the Sanctifier with advanced move, and then the Revenger also had advanced move. He's the Arc Gnome that's kind of towing the first level hill. So the idea behind this uh, board that we've created here is it's a Menoth Temple that's been desecrated, and we're trying to take it back. So got to throw a little flavor into it. If you see that there's it's actually two levels of hills, um, is how we play it, and so the uh, the green sections at the bottom kind of show you like the hedge where the hills are, um, and those are steps leading up to them. So right now I've got stuff on top of the the second level hill, and I'm now I'm running up stuff onto the first level hill. So these daughters that are about to go are bait. He's prayed them. He wants to come after them. So I'm gonna send some way off to the side, where they'll be able to get retribution, and send a couple right up to where they're just kind of at the edge of his threat range. Um, not enough of them to, uh, to, for him to kill the unit, but enough for him to, to bring them out enough that I'll be able to come after his stuff. The, uh, the idea when you're playing against P. Morvana is he can only bring back his single wound infantry. Um, and I don't think that uh, Fort's played against a list that is going to be quite as capable of reaching all his infantry and taking them off the board like this one can. So uh, if I can neuter out his uh, ability to re regrow all his stuff, um, then we're going to be in real good shape. So those are the Flamebringers, um, and they're running up and taking the, uh, the wall. Again, it's great to have super fast horse with Pathfinder built in. Um, my Arc Node, the plan for him, I, he should really, if I had my, my Druthers, would be down near the bogs, because I'd love to get those guys uh, sent up with uh, Pursuit. That's it for turn one. Well, War Machinist has moved uh, the unit that I prayed close enough that I can get uh, an extra couple of inches of movement off of uh, the bottom three of my blood trackers. He made the mistake of thinking it was eight inches for prey to get the bonus versus ten. Uh, it's right on the marker that he has on his chicks, though. He just checked that out and saw that. So we're going to try to take out a few of these. Matt eight needs sevens to hit them. Uh, I probably need to put two on each one just to be sure. They have quick work with Nuala, so uh, I might be able to shoot a few of the ones that are within five uh, if I kill them. Shooting them is not a sure thing either, though. Uh, I have to be careful and keep Nuala in a spot that she can uh, keep everybody in command. I'm going to stick a few of them on the northernmost, the the red-based uh, unit of daughters just to try to kill a few of them too uh, and one I'm gonna leave one of them in the back I probably should leave two because if he gets really determined with his acrobatics he can probably get to uh, and kill one of the uh, just one of the models in the back and if he wipes out this entire unit I, I won't be happy uh, that's the problem I see playing his army with the acrobatics and the silence of death uh, possibility it, it, it could be uh, he could kill one unit this turn and one unit next turn and I could be in a world of hurt. Uh, we'll see. I put regrowth on the blood trackers and I'm going to put uh, harvest on Morvana. I'm not going to put the uh, the armor buff on anything yet. Uh, I don't think he has anything that can hit hard enough to to uh, warrant the armor buff that can reach anything of mine. His jack might be able to get to the rip horn if I move it far enough forward and don't leave enough stuff in the way that he can't trample over it or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. I just don't have the fury to do all, all of Morvana's buffs in one turn. Her tier list, if I played her tier list, I wouldn't be able to play with the rip horn, but uh, Brynos fits in. He's the only heavy that can go in her tier list. She gets to start with all of her upkeeps in play, and that's a pretty good deal. But you have to play with two units of the Blood Weavers, and I'm not sure I want to do that. This, this is a fun, fluffy kind of list anyway. It's not something I would normally drop with P. Morvana. 
Uh, we're missing a whole bunch here. The uh, needing sevens to hit, I thought I would get about half of them, and I did not. I, I need I need sevens to hit the uh, prey daughters and five, uh, five or uh, nines to hit the non prey daughters. So it's it's uh, it's not a sure thing uh, to hit half of them, but I'll take what I can. I got one of them there and tried a uh, snap fire, but didn't get the other guy. It was unfortunate. Uh, I think I'm I think. Uh, I need sevens to hit these, and I miss both of them. I'm going to reform now uh, with the ones that got their charges. Uh, just trying to jam up as best I can. You can't you can't jam his army. You can't jam the daughters or or Thyra because of the acrobatics again, but you can jam his jacks and make make essentially it it does the same thing if if i jam his jacks and he tries to clear space with those jacks then for, for those jacks to move with the daughters what happens is the daughters have to stay back there to deal with the uh my infantry and he has to be careful of the placement of his of his daughters so that he doesn't block charge lanes with his own jacks so it it, it essentially does the same thing it's just it's not as satisfying, I guess, to, to force him to stay back there. Uh, the little blood tracker that I left at the bottom of the temple mount near the stairs there, behind that ring, uh, she, she's just uh, begging to be murderized by some of these uh, daughters. He's got a couple of them they're going to be able to. He's got a vengeance move on them, so he's going to be able to move forward far enough to walk over to where she is. Uh, through all my army, and uh, uh, try get try to get at least a shot on her. Now he knew, uh, Thyra may not be able to get far enough forward to to give her the carnage boost, which means she would be needing uh, eights, I believe, mat six, I believe, to hit her. So it's not a sure thing. And then even if she does hit and kill, I have a, I'm going to have a one third chance of making the tough check uh, with the zombify from the Gator Men. Um, they can't do anatomical precision on my zombified guys, but a power nine against defense or armor eleven is not a. You don't need anatomical precision too often. The little uh, gator dudes, the little uh, bog trot shambler, are just going to spread around and try to give him very few places to land around anything, so that he, his acrobatics gets a little bit nullified. Morvana's blocked in mostly. Uh, I'm going to use the Druid Wilder and the Stones in a second here to uh, continue the blockage. Uh, Try to black clad spray there. Didn't hit anything. He's uh, his ma He he should have a magic of eight. I, I mean, if the U Druid UA attachment has a magic of eight, the uh, black clad should have a magic of eight. It would help a lot. There goes the uh, jamming up to protect Morvana from the acrobatic chicks. Trees are going to move up just to get in the way, give them a few targets to hold them back a little bit. We're both fairly far forward in, in, in this on this map. Um, he, he's going to need to take out the stones, and his his little chicks don't kill stones very easily. A dice minus nine. Uh, they need a 16 to kill one on a charge attack. Um, and that's just not a very likely occurrence. Now, he, he could hit him a couple of times, but then dice minus 9, he needs to roll 10s to do any damage at all to them. Uh, uh, so it, it's not, it's not a uh, sure thing. All right, Thyra turn 2. Like a mouse to cheese, he has taken the full-on bait. I'm not going to kill one of his single infantry units this turn. I'm going to kill both of his single infantry units this turn and see what he can do with a couple beasts and uh, a bokur uh, against me. So first thing is vengeance moves. The uh, white daughters are going first. I guess we'll call them blue. Um, and uh, they take one off the board immediately. I think swing and miss on the next one. Nope, nope, tough roll. Knockdown. 
So now my vengeance moves, so we're going to get up into that cloud. So if you see he's got one tucked behind, if you look at the, the, the hill with the four pillars on it, the top left pillar, there's one tucked behind there of his uh, blood trackers. And there's another blood tracker tough, tucked by that standing stone all the way in the green on the left-hand side. Um, and those are the two that, you know, I'm going to have to make sure I get uh, models to. I should actually be able to get mm, maybe all of the red daughters on those last two over on the side. Um, that's my thinking going into the start of this turn. I'm going to feet with Thyra, which is going to move everybody forward, get them into the clouds, so I don't have to worry about clouds. And with acrobatics, I can pretty much get anywhere I want to get to. Um, and with the speed of uh, seven inches, so ten and a half inches, gets me pretty much anywhere I want to on the board. Um, I want to make use of two things here when I do this. Uh, I want to make use of uh, uh, Carnage with Thyra, so I know I'm going to spend three for that. Um, and I'm going to put one on the Blood of Martyrs because he did not advance deploy or advance move, which is what he would have been able to do. He'd be in the same line with that Sanctifier um, had I had one more unit of Daughters and not the Devout in the list, which is anyone playing this, I recommend at least three units of Daughters. I know there's uh, champions of this list on the forums. Paradox that plays up in Detroit that plays with four units of daughters. Um, so, anyways, there, there's options. Um, but I would never get rid of the flame ringers. They're too good for uh, what you get. Um, one of the biggest weaknesses of this list is that, you know, most of the Menos stuff is exemplar. And exemplar is, you know, they don't have to make uh, command checks. And. I played this at 35 points a lot, and I got frustrated with it because I played a match against High Reclaimer, and uh, I wound up having everything break, basically, uh, to High Reclaimer's uh, terror, and that was just annoying. Uh, so right now, Fire is going. She's feeded. She's positioned herself up on the hill. She's going to use acrobatics. There's two um, blood witches, or what do you call them? They're not blood witches. Jeez. Uh, chicks with sticks that she can get to with her overtake. So she's gonna come swing on the first one. She's put up Carnage, so basically not missing. Um, and she toughs. So now my thinking goes, well I was gonna put, uh, I was gonna put uh, SOD on one of those units, but uh, now I'm gonna say, okay, I'll kill her with a second attack. And I think that I take her. So now I overtake to the other one Spend my last focus, I believe, checking to make sure who's going to be in my feet uh, to kill off the other um, blood tracker. There's no reason with Thyra to camp one or two focus. If she's she's going to rely on her defense to stay alive, and if her defense doesn't keep her alive, nothing's going to. So camping with Thyra doesn't do a whole lot, especially if you want to cast on like Carnage. Um, so the choirs come up and they sung battle. Uh, now I believe, yep, I have two horses that can place, uh, and the other three are out of Thyra's feet. Um, but these guys are going to do a lot of work. So, charging the black clad. And then we're going to charge the uh, gallows. Uh, I have, this next horse is going to charge the back of my other horse. Um, so that it will be able to get the reform. I don't have a lot of things that can actually charge this turn. So I'm basically charging myself in the back. Uh, counting on my guys to hit and sidestep out of the way. The last guy ran to the uh, edge, and that's where I want them all to wind up, kind of on that flank. Uh, so we go with Carnage um, and the charge attack. I think they're mat 10 on the charge, so the black clad is going to melt um, as soon as I roll some dice. There's some discussion going on at this point if you can charge with your mount, and if the mount gets the plus 2 and all that type of thing. So it's always... <laughs> Good to know your rules. Anyway, so we're gonna hit, take off the uh, the black clad. So there, he, I believe there he goes. Yep, and there he goes. So I now do my side step, and now I'm getting to that that one blood tracker that was hiding uh, behind that hill. So we now get to her, and uh, I think my last side step, I get to swing on uh, one of the uh, one of the infantry units that with their little daggers can do dispels. I don't know. They don't have tough, so they go away pretty easy. Um, now I'm going to kill his gallows. Sidestep that guy out the way so everybody else has a successful charge but fails to hit anything in the back. And now we're going to do our uh, reform. So 
one is going to go up, try to jam a little bit, and the rest are going to set up for uh, for next turn. So I felt pretty good about what they did. They got to a good spot on the board. Um, I've pretty much kept them away from that side of the board to, if I want to start dominating the flag on that side. But really, if I get into a long, drawn-out game with this list, I think you tend to, to lose. So what we're going to do is try to keep prime pressure. And there is tough check number two for that chick on the uh on the side and so uh i sidestep with blood of martyrs off of her and hit the next one and she's gonna tough and i sidestep back and hit the one i hit on the other side and she's gonna tough so one two three attacks of blood of martyrs and three tough uh chicks with sticks so this is not the, uh, that's not exactly the plan I wanted to. I decide I'm not going to panic. I'm going to just relax. The devout can get to both with knockdown models. He has to make two more tough checks. And he makes them both. So there you go. So now he has made one, two, three, four, five tough checks on those two models. Um, and this is, uh, I'm not going to say I'm going on tilt just yet, but it's coming. Just a little foreshadowing for you guys. Um, so really those ones needed to be cleared out so that the daughters could get deep into his lines and, and kill the other ones um i got a lot of ways to still attack those but it's really really annoying um so these daughters are coming the blue ones and basically you want to get them to as many of the uh the chicks as we can get to so Acrobatics is a beautiful thing. Get to fire her over the way and stay out of other people's way. Let the ones that are further out still do their charges. So, again, we're going to get at least the knockdown model is going to have to make at least two more tough checks. So, we'll see how that goes. And here we go. Anatomical precision. Or, no, they just, they're knocked down. So, they have to roll a hit and then roll the damage. And that one toughs. <laughs> and two tough checks on this one and he makes them both so that model has tough six times the other one is tough twice the other one is tough once the other one is tough twice so the, the irony of course in all this Styra has a spell that uh, you cannot make tough checks on <laughs> um, but you know I don't sure that I would even put tough I mean, wouldn't have put that spell on the white ones I would have put it on the on the red daughters so Anyways, I have got these daughters that I have left. Their job was going to be to get really deep in to kill his uh, one blood tracker in the back. And I was going to get at least two or three on her. And that would let me do combined melee. Because um, she'd be the only one that's not in carnage range. The other ones are pretty much hitting pretty well at mat eight. Um, with two attacks. And that's generally enough to take care of a lot, do a lot of work. So now I'm having to run them to the side, to the ones that the uh, Blue Daughters did not clear. So again, we're getting attacks on all of them again. Um, but at, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty much full on tilted after this turn. So this is, you'll see, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I was in the tank a little bit before this, but I was like, you know, it's still salvageable. The one thing about this list is I can get models pretty much anywhere. But here we go. So we're going to roll. And shocker, no tough checks. All right, so the plan's working. I just need to get the guy in the back. This guy I just nudge that token up next to. You. I get that guy, everything's going to work. He's got to make two tough checks on his knockdown model. And I might be uh, ranting a little bit right now. That's why it's taking so long to make these attacks. Because <laughs> I'm telling them, if that thing makes two more tough checks, I'm just, here we go. All right, so the one that is outside of Carnage, um, I needed eights to hit, and I was not able to hit. So I'm going back and doing the other ones. The uh, the model, the one that's closest to us that is already toughed five times, tough two more times. So it's now tough seven times in a row. 
and uh, it is not going to go down. So that is uh, very perplexing to me. I've, I've cleared out all but two of the blood trackers and all but one of the, uh, the girls that have the daggers. So here's my devout coming in and swinging on uh, Nuala, or maybe the leader, the leader. So just to spite me, he promotes the one that's keeps toughing. And, uh, you know. So at this point, I'm having visions of these things all popping up in my back lines, murdering all my choir and all that type of stuff. So Sanctifier is going to come forward. He's got a soul on him. He had a soul at the start of the turn. So he's going to get three attacks. He can hit three models. Um, one of them, all three of these do not have tough. So he's able to take them off the board between Carnage and Battle. And so you see the problem at this point is <laughs> I've uh, I've kind of left Thyra exposed. Um, I mean, she still has a good defense, but uh, I did not even know that they, uh, the goat with the tall horns has bulldoze. So there's a little foreshadowing for you as well. Um, but I still have Nicaea, and I, have to, I think I go for the moral victory here um, in that Nicaea is going to come over. I'm trying to figure out a way to get Nicaea to do something and get a quick work shot um, at the last, uh, I guess they're called Blood Weavers. Again, acrobatics. I have reached the knockdown model. He's got to make two more tough checks. So let's see if he can do it this time. Right now we're checking line of sight for after I quote-unquote kill his guy, will I be able to get a quick work shot off? And the answer is no. I don't have line of sight to her. But anyways, Nicaea's two attacks actually take off that ridiculous model. I fire into combat, or I fire at something, I don't hit it. And I miss my own stuff as well. And now I'm going to sprint. I figure at least uh, she can do is bravely step in the way. And that's the end of uh, Thyra's turn. Well, that turn set my opponent on tilt. I made a huge amount of tough rolls. There was two stretches where I made six in a row and five in a row. Uh, it completely foiled his plan to wipe out an entire unit of my stuff. Uh, left me with a bunch of corpses all over the place. And uh, Morvana able to bring back five of those models. Five of the uh, blood trackers. Uh, so I'm going to put five blood trackers and I think five or six uh, uh, shamblers on the map. More importantly, the stone stayed intact, so I can port Brennos up next to Thyra. And uh, the rip horn is, is lined up perfectly to put a bulldoze up and then just slam that little jack right over the top of Thyra, knocking her down. I'm pretty sure I've got a straight up textbook assassination attempt uh, possible here. I'm going to place all these little guys, but I believe that they're kind of irrelevant. It's not a big deal. They're going to do exactly uh, what they would do if I wasn't trying to uh, assassinate this turn. Except I'm going to leave Morvana fairly vulnerable. Uh, the little the little swamp gobbers need every advantage they can get to hit these defense 15 daughters. So they're going to try to to uh, get placed in the rear arcs. And then they're going to try to do combined melee on the daughters. Uh, if I can wipe out this entire unit of daughters, uh, then I can use swip the, swip, uh, swap the uh, prey to either the other unit of daughters or to, or to Thyra herself or to the cab or something else other than you know, what, where they are now. Uh, most of my blood trackers had to come back behind my army because the only one I had left alive was the one that was directly behind Morvana. So here we go. The uh, the the shamblers and the book who are going to activate. No, the tree. I guess. No, the tree will be in the way. It's going to have to be the book who. I can't get all of these in the back arc of this these these one this one one daughter. So I'm just going to put as many as I can around it. I'm going to probably do two attacks then two combined in the back and then two not in the back and see how that works out for me. Um, they're, they're very low mat attacking these very high defense never uh, it, it's always chancy
Gonna miss the first couple times, then hit. Uh, get a corpse. Try to whack this one up here. Uh, get her too. Another corpse. Uh, and a couple of uh, fury for Morvana. This one's gonna be harder to hit because I don't. I'm not in her back arc, and I only have two guys attacking her. So I don't, yep, I miss. Uh, not sure if I want to just go ahead and go for it now. I'm going to try to kill it to clear out a few of his uh, guys that are in the way. I guess Gorax will move up and uh, Primal up the Rip Horn. Actually, that's not a good idea. Uh, I think I'm going to use the Wilder first. Yeah, the Wilder's going to go. The Bokor kills kills off uh, a couple of guys. It took him a couple, took him four or five of the Bog Trogs to buy attacks and boosting to hit to get to get the chick that was in his way. The one Blood Weaver is going to attack the the horse and is going to do Blood Spiller. Has a chance to kill him. Is you know it's rolling three dice. So it's got to hit first, and that's not easy to do. Having by herself, uh, she did get him, however, which is. Uh, those things are always really dangerous to living models. Uh, I've heard it, someone call them the most, uh, the best unit that never gets taken. For five points, you get six models. They can dispel, and in the the era of body and soul, they're actually a very good option instead of Trollocs. Uh, you can have those when you don't have a dispel or a banishing ward or whatever caster. I, I like them. I've played with two units before in Morvana one tier list and uh, took that to a tournament and did really well until I ran into uh, Epic Vale. Uh, that was not a fun matchup. Uh, we're going to go with uh, clearing out a little bit more of his infantry. Um, and then we're going to try the assassination. I'm fairly certain I have a, a good shot at it. Uh, I just have to make sure that none of my models are in the way because you can't bulldoze your own models. Damn. Uh, Brennos is a huge, huge, huge model. He, he gets in the way of everything. He doesn't fit into a standard cut uh, uh, battle foam, uh, foam for the large bases. I had to actually cut two two side-by-side -side pockets out for him to fit in there. That, that staff is just ridiculously large. And the Riphorn's a big model himself. Brynos is up in the middle there. He, the stones teleported him. The stone keeper didn't do anything uh, other than that. I'm going to get rid of the uh, Swamp Gobber uh, to try to blow up somebody with the Gator Man. Uh, did the, the I'm not sure what the ability is called. The one where he blows up somebody and does pow equal to the armor of the model to something. I was just trying to get him out of the way and he was jammed in there. So uh, the easiest way to do it was with the uh, Gator Man Witch Doctor. Now Morvana's going to go try to whack a few of the uh, dudes. Doesn't do much. Gorax is going to go and primal up the, uh, the uh, Rip Horn. The Wilder has already primaled up uh, Brynos, who, who is teleported up next to Thyra there. And I'm looking around, and I think I have a straight line to slam the small jack over the top of Thyra. Uh, I'm going to activate the Blood Trackers first, just to make sure. I might be able to clear a couple of cav models here and there. Uh, and just in case that, that one, there's one um, daughter that's kind of possibly in the way. I'm going to see if I can get like a quick work shot off at her. Um, I don't think she's in the way, but never can tell. The Bulldoze is going to be key here, I think. Uh, it, it's almost like he set it up to, to facilitate it. There's nothing behind either of his jacks to stop him from being pushed around. And uh, the, the little jack has zero chance of not being uh, uh, in a straight line right over the top of Thyra. I actually missed the big jack when I tried to do this, so 
uh, I don't get to bulldoze him. You, when you do a slam, it's straight center line of your model to the straight center line of the model you're slamming. And when I line that up with the laser, it, it actually misses the the uh, his heavy jack there with my base, I, I, so I can't push him out of the way. Uh, I, I don't need to. The, this slam, I'm going to boost to hit. And with primal up, I'm a mat 8, and then the boosting makes it almost 100%. It's like 94% chance uh, uh, of hitting this guy. Uh, I need a... Actually, I need a 5, so it's a little bit less, but not by much. Uh, he goes, slams him far enough to put him over the top of Thyra. Thyra actually gets moved closer to Brenos. It didn't matter. Brenos has reach, and Brenos was base to base with her almost. He was far enough away that I could get the slam done, but uh, close enough that that he, she wasn't going to go anywhere if she got pushed away. So the slam did five, da the collateral damage did five to Thyra because uh, uh, her armor is so so light. And then Brynos whacks her. So Brynos gets the win. He's broken. 